Okay, we'll let's pray. Then okay. Father, we, we just come before you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. Thank you for your presence. Father God, that makes a difference in each one of our lives, Lord. We thank you that um yeah, it is your presence, Lord, in our lives that even enables us, Lord, to live life, Lord, the way you want us to. Lord, we thank you for constantly drawing us, Lord, um, to your very self, Lord, through your spirit. We thank you that we are drawn to you, Lord, by your word, the beauty of your word, Lord, the beauty of uh, holiness that we experience, Father God, um, through the work of your spirit, Father God. We thank you. And Lord, we, we just ask, Lord, this morning, that may we continue to be in awe of you. Lord, let nothing take that place, Father God. Let nothing substitute that place of being in awe of you, being in awe of your presence, being in awe of your, Lord, of your word, Lord, of your principles, your precepts, Lord. So wonderful, so beautiful, God. So refreshing, Lord, from the things of the world, from the ways of the world, Father God, from the values of the world, oh, Father God. Yes, Lord, the truth that, Lord, that you bring in, oh, Father God, which is uh, just cuts across, oh, Father God, all kinds of lies and deceptions, Master. We thank you, Father God. And, Lord, we ask this morning, may your word be written deep in our hearts, Father God. And, Lord, that we may not sin against you. May your word be hidden, God, uh, that we continue to, Lord, uh, draw God, strength from your word. May we all be rooted, Lord, in your word, O oh, Father God, that so that we might be like the tree that is planted by rivers of water, Lord, not um, uh, not withering, but uh, bringing, bearing fruit in season. Father God, we thank you, Lord. Yes, Lord, we thank you. We give you all the praise at this time, even as we look into these sessions, God, we give you all the glory. In Jesus' matchless name, we pray. Amen. Amen. Yeah, so um, just wanted to um, you know, focus our attention on, um, you know, at the outset, on Psalm 1, which really um, talks about um, the lifestyle of a person, you know, uh, of a person the Bible calls blessed, right? So Psalm 1 says, Blessed is the man, blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stands in the path of sinners, nor sits in the seat of the scornful. Okay, so Psalm 1 verse 1. So it talks about, um, the Bible calls such a person blessed, and it talks about the lifestyle, right? It like, talks about the, the behavior, lifestyle, choices of such a person. Okay, so this person does not stand in the path of sinners, meaning it does not, uh, you know, in the choices, in the, in the lifestyle, in the life of a a person who's called branded as a sinner right does not live like that does not um, walk or conduct himself or herself in the counsel or advice of those who are ungodly so ungodly advice who does not walk in that and then also does not seat in the seat uh, sits in the seat of the scornful meaning like one who does not sit in that place of influence or authority you know influenced by the scornful right but if you look at verse 2 it verse 2 says his delight is in the law of the Lord. Okay, so, so which which brings us to that question. You know, what is it? What is the delight? Right. What does it mean to delight? To delight means to enjoy, right? Enjoy deeply. To delight doesn't mean to suffer. To delight doesn't mean to endure. It means to enjoy. So it says here, his delight. You know, his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law he meditates day and night. Okay, so. What does it mean to delight? It means to enjoy. It means to you know take pleasure in, right? And it says, in in what does he delight in? He delights in the law of the Lord. So, so when you when it comes to the word of God, the Bible, what is our you know our perspective or how do we engage with the word of God, right? Do we read the word of God because we feel that oh something bad will happen if I don't read it? Do we read the word of God because you know, uh, you know, because God has commanded, and therefore I have to read it. Right? All these are good reasons. But why do we really? How do we engage with the Word of God? You know, with the Bible. Do we delight in the Word of God? Right? So, do we delight in the Word of God? Do we enjoy? Do we take pleasure in the Word of God? That's a question we need to ask ourselves. Do I do that? And if we are not doing that, then we need to ask ourselves why. Why am I not delighting, enjoying, just 
reading the word of god meditating on the word of god so because it says he delights in the law and he meditates in it day and night right constantly he's thinking thinking deeply thinking over and over again pondering maybe speaking it muttering it right he's doing with the word of god he's engaging himself in the word of god in this manner so it's a deep wholehearted engagement so so that person is called blessed right this is how he lives his one is his his life which is visible to every everyone his lifestyle his choice then something which is not visible this is this is it it's invisible others may may know it others may not know it others may not see it but he is delighting in the word of god he is meditating in it day and night right so so we are invited to do that and he's saying blessed is such a person and then verse 3 right verse 3 talks about this is what the outcome is right this is what that person is going to experience this is how the quality of life is of that person he'll be like a tree that is planted by rivers of water so you know even as we are called invited to to be to be ministers of god to be ministers um, or to be communicators of god to be preachers right to proclaim the word of god these three verses you know is something that we need to really think about is something that we need to very you know really reflect and question or do i see this in my life especially verse 2 then verse 1 makes sense and also verse 3 will make sense verse 2 is very important because it talks about the secret life it talks about a life that is hidden and well 1 and 3 talks about the manifestation of that kind of a life right so we are called to do that so the reason you know, we just want to look into that is because you know as we are looking at sermon construction and the mechanics of it the nuts and bolts of it now uh, we should never forget this this aspect you know of our life this lifestyle uh, of ours we should not forget that we delight in the word that we meditate on the word of god day and night right okay um so last class we looked at the sermon we looked at the title and uh, i hope you kind of um, let me see has anyone uploaded the titles sermon topic and title in that google sheet um i did pastor you did okay let me just see open that sheet okay let me um okay can you see this okay online students can you see the sheet or do you, what do you see oh you see something else okay let me just um, okay you don't see the sheet okay let's see yeah okay yeah you see that right yeah i see very few names there only five names are there what about the rest that google sheet i see only sam matthews abhishek sagar shekhar amrutwa lucy samuel gertrude godino okay so the rest you need to fill in that sheet that google sheet that i put there in the class work section okay so everyone blessy asapo komal ya yeah, brother what huh? yeah prem ya diksha vimal uh rufus and sunil sugan everybody and then online students also you know i see a whole bunch so um yeah okay so please do that because that's going to be something that you're going to be developing on your own you know please feel free to change it okay but change it early because that is something that you're going to be putting together right you're going to be developing a sermon based on this whatever we are learning like now we've learned about the title we learned about okay the topic 
and we learned about okay uh, some of the aspects of in a contemporary time in, in today's time how we need to have a it's good to have a sermon graphic it's good to have something that draws attention because you're uploading uh, the sermon on social media and you know other things so it's good to have that so we're just considering all those things uh, we're learning about all that okay so we need to uh, start putting this okay so by this evening uh, please upload please enter it it there okay okay so let's um, let's move on okay so we uh, so last class we looked at the sermon title and uh, topic and you know various things that we need to consider when we look at the title okay uh, we looked at the uh, introduction as well different ways by which you can introduce the subject um, you can do a you know it doesn't have to be very complex we can do a very simple way of introducing this sermon just say this is what we are going to talk about okay so that is what is called as a proposition okay so um, if you look at point number four right the proposition you know, it's a simple declaration of the subject which means this is what we are going to study today or look at today and like i said you know these are all suggestions right it will help <clears throat> the listener it helps the one who is the audience to prepare the audience to receive what you're saying okay so it's not like chapter and verse this is how you have to do it no it's not like that like some like i like we said last class there are some sometimes when you know people are take a very creative route in order to share they might share a testimony they might talk about you know they, they one day in this village lived this man and this was his name and so on and then finally at the end of it you know reveal who the man was and or the woman was that person is you know one who's standing in front of you meaning you know this is me like this is my testimony you could just do that and then draw some points from that from learnings from that and inspire the audience uh, and lead them to make a decision so it could be that also right but this is something for us to consider so proposition it is the the big idea okay this is what this pro, this sermon is going to be and also along with that so there are two parts to it one is the subject so what you're going to say okay this is what i'm going to talk about which answers the question what am i talking about what am i going to talk about the second one is what exactly am i saying am i describing about what i'm going to talk about so for example if you're talking about faith the the complement of that subject is you know what aspect of faith are you talking about the good fight of faith are you talking about how to build yourself in faith uh, you know praying in the holy spirit what is it what aspect of faith how does faith come uh, how does faith or you know fighting the faith, good of fight of faith when when you don't feel like it what is it that you're going to be talking about so that is the complement of it so basically it's just a description right of what you're going to be sharing on okay so then from the from this proposition comes the main points of the sermon okay and it's good for us to use these questions why how what when where okay what is it so you're describing the topic why when how all these questions you can ask about the topic so that will give us you know for, for you when when we are preparing we can ask those questions ourselves okay what do i want to share <clears throat> why do i want to share about this what do i want to share about this um and you know some of these things like if these questions apply like when and where and how and so on so you can uh, you can answer that and also in the sermon bring in that information right bring in that information and share it um right okay so that is what we call as the uh, the proposition now from there we go on to the main points of the sermon right now what are these main points it's like what we call as the divisions of the sermon right this sermon is divided into five parts and all these five parts add up 
to the whole sermon. Right? So you're giving some five points, maybe some three points. And in fact, uh, John Wesley and the Methodist movement and they are they are you know known for the three point sermon or the or the five point sermons. Right. So it's easy for people to understand. It is uh, it is something that people can recall. Right. Which means they can remember and also apply it in our in, our, in their lives. Right. So. They're known for that, the Methodist Church, you know, three point, five point sermon. Um, so something like that, right? So when you have this, these points, you no, know, so question is, can I preach a message without any points? Okay. What do you what do you think? Without saying, okay. Mm. Mm. Uh, I think no, Pastor. Yeah. So, um, see, there are there are two views, right? One is a very structured sermon. Okay, structured meaning it has certain parts. There's a you know it's it's it's, it's like perfect. Right? It's got these points. It's got these illustrations. But also, there is value in what you would you know, what you would call as a very unstructured sermon, right? So where the person, it's like, you know, it's, it's like you go for a walk. Okay, let's say you, just imagine you're going to, how many of you have gone to Nandi Hills? All of you? No? Okay. <laughs> you planned, but they've not gone. Short term Bible college, I think everyone went. Okay. Okay, how many of you have gone to Lalbagh? Okay, wrong illustration. <laughs> so, how many of you have been to that garden there, right behind? No, not allowed, no? Kaban Park event, okay. So it's like going to our walk in Kaban Park, right? So you go through the entrance, and then you just you're just going for a walk around, right? And you see some giant trees, huge trees, and you look at that, and somebody points out. Maybe you go to another place, some you know, you're entering a section where there are a lot of flowers, and you you talk about that. Somebody's pointing that, and then you you go sit down somewhere. And you're, you know, talking about something, or you're looking at all the birds. It's a very, it's you know, it's a very relaxed walk, right? So some messages are like that. I'm sure you've heard. Right? The person is just talking from their heart. It's just freestyle. Um, there are no structured points. You know, now we need to look at this point number two. Is no, there's nothing like that. So there is value in both. Okay. And the thing is this. God can speak through both of that, um, but pr but predominantly, you know, when you use a structured way of sharing the word, like for example, you know, I got married in 98, 1998, okay, uh, but I still remember the message the uh, the pastor spoke not because i was you know normally you know when in marriages you don't remember the message because you're focused on so many things you know but i remember because he used a five point message okay he calls it the five c okay commitment communication you know compassion uh, and you know other things so i remember that because he used the five c's five points after all these years after 25 years i remember that so there is value in that. So when we have a structured point kind of a, a message, there is value. No, so maybe you're preparing for a devotion, 10 minute devotion. Maybe you can share only two points, three points, right? But there is value. Why? Because people are able to understand. Okay, there is a logical flow, right? You're able to understand. Secondly, they are able to remember. Right, you go back and you're able to remember, recall, and remembering and recalling is important because then you're able to apply it in your life. This truth, okay. What did the pastor say? What did the speaker say? Ah, yeah, I remember these three things, and then you're able to apply. It. But having said that, I just want to point us to the truth that you know what the Lord Jesus said in John chapter 14, right while describing the ministry of the Holy Spirit. He said, the Holy Spirit will teach. The Holy Spirit will, will also remind you of my words. Did he say that? Yeah, let's look at that verse. John chapter 14. Right? We look at the ministry of the Holy Spirit. 
he's the one who's a teacher and we know that revelation understanding um you know all these insights the holy spirit illuminates right he throws light on it so john chapter 14 and um, verse 26 right first of all he's called the helper verse 16 talks about that verse 26 says but the helper the holy spirit whom the father will send in my name he will teach you all things so he's going to be teaching and secondly we see that uh, he will remind you bring to your remembrance all the things that i said to you you know if you you wonder how do the disciples you know how do they write these you know accounts and it was it was years decades after they walked with the lord it is because of the ministry of the holy spirit he is the one who taught them he is also reminding them of the words which jesus spoke to them right so um so we can take uh we can be you know assure take assurance yes lord i'm preparing i'm speaking but lord you teach them you also remind them so we are teaching with the dependency on the holy spirit so he's having a parallel conversation with the people who are listening to the message that we are sharing right so having a structured thing actually helps right it brings uh, attention focused on the passage um it organizes our thoughts into a definite structure it makes it easy for us to communicate also right for us to it has a logical flow so you're able to communicate okay we're talking about sermon outline which has these sermon points divisions right um it should actually serve one thought or one big idea right so that is what the title is about right uh, different titles that we have seen one big idea so it should all the points should serve that so just think about it this points that you have in your sermon are they talking about different things things that are very very different from you know what that sermon title is then it's better not to have that right uh, you're talking about you know uh for example if you're talking about the love of god and you're talking about something which is totally not connected at all you just say okay uh, you know point number 4 i just want to talk about praise and worship or you know it doesn't make sense it seems very disconnected and disjoint you know why did you put in there you know maybe you thought that okay <clears throat> i know about it but that's why i want to put it no does it serve sorry does it serve the main title the dominant idea Okay. so the outline uh, should have that the outline is also the blueprint of the sermon you know uh, how many of you have seen a blueprint blueprint of a of a house of a building right so you, you may would have seen it the architects use that and um so what does it have it it shows where every <clears throat> every aspect of the building is like the where does the beam come where do the doors go where the windows go everything is there so the sermon outline is like a blueprint that just at the outset it just gives you okay this is where this is the direction of the message this is where this is this is the point that is being emphasized these are the four points these are the five points and so on right now the main points can have sub points okay so we're talking fairly about a maybe a, an in-depth study maybe right so what sub points can be there you know um for example if you are talking about okay we're talking about the same you no know, thing about god's love um maybe we we, we could start by saying okay <clears throat> what is love itself and then we can go on to talk about the love of the human love and we can talk about the love of god which is agape and within that we can probably have several sub points which describe the love of god right which so you having a point and you having several sub points now these sub points are connected to the main point okay but they are different in in the sense there there is there is a distinction between each of these points and then they are adding to the main point okay so um you know sometimes we when you look at the notes the way the notes are arranged talk about that right when we look at the me- mechanics of sermon uh, uh, construction we saw the title we saw everything so all that is adding to the main thing which is the mechanics of sermon construction right sermon uh, putting together the sermon but all these are several points divisions which are there and within that we have sub points a sermon you know typically like that right so it helps us to 
uh, elaborate that main point describe that main point give details about the main point so think about that you know don't have points just for the sake of hey i need to have something i need to fill in this page i need to fill in this time right does it really help to have that right? does it really help to describe teach about this particular thing that god has put in your heart okay otherwise leave it drop it you know maybe maybe you're not for that occasion you can leave it you don't have to get into it right so remember that okay so an outline is a blueprint an outline is like the skeleton uh, of the sermon and uh, you know there's progress and order and so on like right? there's continuity etc um you uh, we need to understand that um, the main points let's say we are talking about some three things that main points should be you know interconnected but also different you know for example if the first point also sounds similar to the second point then it's better not to have that okay these are simple things but basic things sometimes we make that mistake okay i'm talking i'm going to talk about you know three things related to the topic but if the first point and the second point sounds similar you know there's no point in having that right uh, you're just reiterating what you said earlier and you're wasting time wasting time wasting the time of the audience as well so um make sure that yes it's connected to the topic but let it be different let it add an additional information something that is different to the main topic if not let it be part of point number 1 itself right okay then we come to this whole thing of illustrations okay uh, uh what does what does it mean what is an illustration what does it mean what does it do so like we said illustration to illustrate means to draw okay that's the thing an illustration means a picture right so to draw something to to pictureize something it brings clarity okay so you might have heard somebody is preaching and then they say for example okay and then they are saying something maybe giving their own personal testimony or maybe you they're saying okay consider the life of you know so and so or the apostle paul right? they are illustrating what he did how he lived so that that point that they are making becomes clear okay maybe if it's a point point on enduring persecution enduring suffering okay so they're saying okay as disciples of the lord jesus we are called to endure difficulties and hardships and it's part and parcel of our life as believers right so they say that and then you might say in order to illustrate it okay so you made your point you're saying okay this is this is the life of a believer so for the audience how can you make it clearer how can you make it even more descriptive an illustration will help right um let's say if you want to use uh, this whole thing of persecution sorry yeah an example a story a parable or a life story right it can be something or or even a personal testimony right so that so for an example uh, you know if it's uh, if an if an example on enduring hardships you now what kind of illustration can you use from your from the bible let's say enduring hardships you know if it's a point on enduring hardships what kind of illustration can we use illustration from the bible can be used to describe that about apostle paul brother the hardships yeah. he went through. yeah through through yeah. when he was uh, preaching the word of god he was stoned to death mm. the way he got up with the spirit yeah. back yeah so so what does that do how does that it help it it and encourages us to walk in his way uh, walk, take as an example and uh, go forward in accepting christ okay uh, you, can, you can just use the mic yeah okay so um it encourages okay okay how does it how does it encourage 
um so we're talking about illustration right so how does it uh, how does it help because it's good to think about this right because it's it's a valuable tool okay yeah it helps in a way like you know you eventually you see god's hand in joseph's life what was the final outcome despite mm. all the struggle similar with regard to paul whatever he uh, faced like persecution and other things and all ultimately what was the result through christ he eventually mm. triumphed so that is a mode of uh, encouragement for the audience you know we might start off with all difficulties and uh, thing just like a movie a hero will have all difficulties but eventually what the director tells mm. the hero comes up triumphant likewise in a ministry life and in our uh, day to day lives mm. you can draw that analogy yeah i'll i'll just read one passage okay so you just tell me you know um let's say we look at second corinthians chapter 11 okay second corinthians chapter 11 verse 23 okay are they ministers of christ i speak as a fool i am more in labors more abundantly in stripes above measure in prisons more frequently in deaths often from the jews five times i received 40 stripes minus one three times i was beaten with rods once i was stoned three times i was shipwrecked a night and a day i have been in the deep in journeys often in perils of water in perils of robbers in perils of my own countrymen um in perils of the gentiles in perils of the city in perils of the wilderness in perils of the sea and perils amongst false brethren in weariness and toil in sleeplessness often in hunger and thirst in fastings often in cold and nakedness beside the other things what comes upon me daily my deep concern for all the churches you know okay we read that so let's say you choose to use that as an illustration and say um what are we illustrating persecution hardships okay so using this passage how does that help just think about it sorry so so when you're preaching you're referring yeah yeah, yeah. so these are like a 360 degree wholesome hardships that paul has actually faced and through all of this you had the lord's grace on him to eventually not give up on the mission and purpose that he has called yeah so when you're saying hardships it goes into the details of what the hardships are see suppose i'm i'm just using a word persecution okay so in your mind persecution could be somebody making fun of you for your faith or in your mind somebody could be you know persecution could be somebody entering into the church and you know destroying some things various ideas when you say hardship for for a person who's in the city hardship could be oh i need to go through the traffic right so the bible is very specific no pastor where it says like you know persecution because of me because so of the so not faith. just because of my lifestyle somebody is persecuting my office or workplaces <laughs> not relevant in this context but persecuting me because i'm a christian i'm a follower exactly. of christ i'm holding on to the truth and then they try to you know target me right. or defame me then is where uh, blessed a, are you those yeah. who are persecuted in yeah. my name and paulus says you know those who want to live godly life will will face persecution right so so here when we use an illustration is gives the details of what kinds of you know otherwise it's just a word and when you use a word like okay persecution hardship in different people it just gives paints a different picture based on the context they are living in you know or based on the season of life they are in but we when we use an illustration when we use these you know uh, maybe a testimony then it brings out the details it just brings out the details and so that person is able to relate better oh okay this is what it is when you say pa, hardship oh it becomes it becomes real you know what you're sharing about hardship it becomes real to that person sometimes it is like that person is also able to relate to that hey i also go through the same thing and here scripture saying that you know there is a assurance of god's presence god's peace etc so they're able to you know recognize some of the things that they are going through as well right so illustration really helps because it brings clarity okay so let's look at a few things that uh, guidelines for illustrations okay so illustrations should be used to explain and clarify the truth okay so we are, we are let's say we are talking about something like justification right 
now i can use a word like justification i can use a word i can uh, what is it you know anyone knows dictionary meaning of justification that is the biblical christianese understanding just as if i had never sinned yeah so justified is to be acquitted right you you be pronounced not guilty you are acquitted right so how would you illustrate that that matters okay because when you illustrate it you you share with a story or you know or with a whatever you know way creatively you illustrate it that brings clarity to that term justification right so many people use a courtroom scene where the you are guilty the judge pronounces you not guilty right so you have that picture justified any other thing illustration that you heard about justification that brings it out very powerfully that you heard or that you think that can bring out that picture of being justified done something that and uh, trying to justify himself i have not committed this and giving him the reason on a positive side on a negative side somebody who's done wrong but they're defending i'm justifying myself no this is not wrong this is what i did but i in my opinion this is not wrong so just trying to justify that scenario yeah no i'm talking so, about the biblical justification like when 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 the lord pronounces you justified so you want to illustrate that saying hey you are justified so how do you what is done based on what is done on the cross you are just so how do you how do you illustrate that any thoughts we are talking to a audience and yeah how best to under make them understand about justification yeah yeah one corinthians one talks about that but you were justified you were cleansed you were sanctified so he's saying hey, this happened to you now how do you illustrate so that? without uh, taking the other religion in name uh, there are many religions that you know you have to do something to attain something okay. but it is only in the christian walk of faith that you know when it is already done on the cross there is nothing that i can do to attain that justification because my hands are sinful i have sinned so just by me doing anything good i will still not be justified because it's like a i'm not a spotless uh, lamb it's like i have a lot of blemish in me so it's only his pure blood without any sin in himself he died on the cross so because of me believing in that on god's eyes he looks not at me he looks at the cross uh, of the calvary like you know what jesus has done because of which i am justified so mm. that's the way i try to probably will try to you know reach out to someone okay. else right. because any walk of faith you look other than christian faith is Correct. like you do you yeah. get, you do so, you yeah do. i get what you're saying but i'm just saying like how would you illustrate that explain that to a, you know let's say a person is a young audience you know the um, the audience is young you know you're like let's say teenagers you know how do you so so the thing is to illustrate it helps right so when you illustrate that word it helps it brings it alive so i'm just talking about the importance of illustrating sometimes we use terms because we are you're so used to in the church use words like salvation and so depending on the audience we need to really use a apt illustration to bring out that truth then they are able to grasp it otherwise it, it becomes a word that bounces right so that's like for example this courtroom thing is a is a thing that you can relate to okay you are guilty you bring an example either from the word if it's there or an external example to just they can relate to just to explain the working of that so that that word makes sense so now can i go for this example like you know uh, i have actually find traffic when i was driving i've actually committed a, a signal jump or a one way signal i've gone and uh, where the cop catches me and i have to pay a fine yeah but in a scenario where the cop lets go thinking of you know i know his father okay and he will pay the fine mm. or he has already paid, paid the in fine. advance 
then i am going scot free exactly so yeah so so that will make this whole thing come alive yeah. so so that's the thing so when we illustrated some of these concepts justification sanctification like for example sanctification when i think of it um i don't know i always remember this you know i used to go on these road trips and i've seen um, you st- you stop by this roadside highway eateries and you eat very nice food okay so once i remember i just peeped into the kitchen and i saw them using a uh, you know the what do you call that um, the broom what do you call in hindi broom jadu they were using the jadu yeah to to thing uh, to clean the <laughs> yeah to clean the thing yeah, I, i think i've shared this before right no so they were using this big uh, what is tawa uh, that is not tawa it's a hot plate right it's a firewood burning this big stove and they're using the jadu to clean yeah just put water on that is going to make a fresh ba- batch of dosa so he's just using that jadu but that jadu is only for that it's not to be used in the bathroom <laughs> it'll be tragedy if he uses it anywhere else to sweep the floor that jadu is only for that when i think of san- sanctification i think of that right hey i'm for the purpose of god i'm set apart that jadu is set apart for the plans and purposes of god so i'm sanctified in christ for his purposes you know things acts that he wants me to do so so when we when we when we illustrate it it brings clarity right the person is able to understand brings clarity it stays with them but it should be an apt illustration okay so yeah so let's look at a few points here right so that's the power of illustration right so illustration if you look at it, if you look at the notes right it should be used to explain and clarify the truth of the sermon illustrations help to nail down a truth meaning it helps to explain the truth understand the truth and establish the truth in a very impressive manner okay illustrations also help in our memory it stays with us we remember the story right we, it, maybe it could be a funny story it could be a sad serious story we remember the story and therefore remember the truth that the story was pointing to okay um it will help stir up emotion and hold attention illustration right for example if it's something if it's something funny and everybody you know it's a funny story but then they it stirred up that emotion and it grabs the attention of people right but we need to make sure that illustrations clarify it should it should be clear it should make the truth clear and not obscure it so sometimes it can be a great story but it's not really connected to the truth right it's a nice story by itself it's a nice incident by itself is a nice experience nice testimony but then connected to the truth it's somewhere it's a little fuzzy right but because you like the story you shared it and then it's not really you know connecting to the truth so we, we should make sure that it brings clarity to the truth that's the important you know that's the important thing that's the primary thing right um and also illustrations should be used in without making the listener tired sometimes these illustrations or stories have too many details too many details right so when you give too many details what happens people lose focus they are becoming tired they tired of listening right so you cannot give you cannot weary or make tired the listener then we are losing the point we are not really getting their attention we are in fact doing opposite of what we need to use the illustration for right so we it should be understandable it should make sense it should be appropriate to the theme of the sermon illustration should be convincing in the sense it it, it should not be some fake story it should mo- not be something that's not convincing enough then we've lost let me lost the uh, whole idea okay so um so that's the thing okay then illustration should be used in the right place at the right time for the right purpose you know certain points we can just state the point and go ahead not every point needs to be illustrated right not every point okay certain points you can just mention it you can keep going you don't need to go into the details of it you can 
keep going. You decide, okay? Because every point, if you are going to illustrate, first of all, it's going to take time. Secondly, maybe it doesn't need that much of an explanation, right? People can understand it. People can relate to it without the illustration itself. So, you know, just make sure that you don't, you're using the illustration at the right place, at the right time, and for the right purposes, right? Okay, so we'll we'll stop here and we'll continue on with um, illustrations, using illustrations in our next class. Right? Okay, thank you so much. God bless. Bye-bye.